ready start mr speaker sir the difficulty is that while civil society voices can make a case for such action in the final analysis it is the state that must implement the needed policies and the nature of the state is not independent in the influence that the structures in society exert democracies have battled hard to force governments to maintain some distance from private capital in general and big business in particular those efforts have been partially successful in specific historical context leading among other things to strong action against monopoly and trustification similar efforts were seen in india immediately after independence as a national state emerged from a freedom movement that was a broad alliance of diverse classes but over the years the distance between state and private capital has narrowed hugely leading to the current situation in which the state promotes big business rather than regulate or curb the later within that framework the decision as to how many and which business groups to promote and to what extent is arbitrary three trends have signaled this narrowing of political distance between the state and big business first the embrace of neo liberalism by powerful voices within and outside the state this implied adoption of the view that the role of the state is not to regulate private capital but to felicitate its growth as means to all round economic progress in fact advocates of neo liberalism have argued that the competition that would be fostered by a liberalized regime will counter concentration the reverse have happened despite early signs in some sectors that the competition had increased even in areas such as telecommunications and civil aviation the initial increase in the number of new players only a process of churning with associated social waste that has finally left a few with signs of collusion among them the consumer will be the loser the second is the propagation of the view that the state must help strengthen domestic big business to not just hold its own against giant global competitors but to step beyond indian shore state policy diplomacy and public resources including those channeled through public banks had to serve as instruments for the purpose while liberalization opened up indian markets and subjected much of indian business to global competition state intervention was modified to protect and promote sections of big business not least through large scale subsidized and transfers third is the refusal to reduce the influence of money in politics in the event closeness of political parties and therefore the governments they may they may lead to big business has turned out to be a prerequisite for garnering the resources needed to manage elections and win electoral support over time policy has been changed to legitimize corporate donations to political parties including through the infamous electoral bonds scheme what is frightening in the current situation is that these tendent tendencies have into a strategy where in the name of strengthening indian business as part of promoting the national interest 
a very few business groups have been actively favored by the state under normal circumstances this should have led to widespread resentment and dissent not just among those in the lower segments of the asset and income pyramid but among more powerful sections closer to the top who are being ignored that would spell instability and also perhaps serve as corrective but that has not happened in the new india because again in the name of national interest state power is being used to suppress any such dissent letter from 20th april 1990 from ajanta cycle manufacturers limited kolkata to mrs nayak trading company bombay dsrs with reference to your instructions we have booked your order for 200 pieces of ajanta cycles complete with accessories we are sorry to inform you that on account of irregular power supply in this region during the past one month our program of production has suffered very much and it has resulted in huge backlog of orders so we are afraid that it will not be possible for us to execute your order according to the schedule of delivery agreed upon we are trying to fulfill our commitments to the best of our ability but even then supply may be delayed by 3 or 4 weeks we very much regret the inconvenience caused to you especially in view of our long and satisfactory business relations with you however in the circumstances that we have mentioned above it will not be possible to entertain any claim for compensation since the delay is due to factors which were entirely beyond our control although we have suffered some losses due to this dislocation in our production schedule we are ready to maintain the price agreed upon if you agree that the full quantity ordered will be accepted when supplied we await your early reply in regard to the matter and we assure you of our best attention at all times yours faithfully